me just get this started and get the message post on Facebook that we're here, okay? So just hang tight and bear with me. Just going to post this over on Facebook here. All right, just about there, girls. All right. We've got it going on Facebook. So now we are just about ready to rock here. So tonight we're going to um, go over some of the tips and tricks that will make it a little bit easier for you to complete the um, November kit. This, as mentioned, was featuring the Heidi Spot um, clear pop memory files. So these are actually like a, a printed plastic as opposed to paper, the files themselves. And we've actually got a small one that has, um, whoops, sorry, been attached to the inside of the larger memory file. So we're going to go over, um, number one, how I went ahead and attached the two. I'm getting that funny message from Ustream again. It's really not liking me. It doesn't, I don't know. Hopefully we don't get bumped out as we did last week. There's been a couple of issues and that doesn't make me happy seeing that message. So we're not going to spend a ton of time going over things tonight, but there are a few important things that I do think... Um, as mentioned, we'll make it a little bit easier. So without further ado, I am just going to open up the chat. Remember that, um, you know, you're more than welcome to sign in. And I'm going to try to watch the chat as always. But as you know, sometimes I get busy working and don't always have the chance to look up. Um, a couple of people over the past little bit I have asked a couple of questions about the written instructions and how how to make the most sense out of how I have the cutting instructions for each of the different papers um, laid out. So I thought I'd go back to the basics because I know we do have a few new subscribers that maybe haven't had the opportunity to do a live class with me. And when you are able to do a class, of course, I expect explain my train of thought or my reasoning a little more so. So, you know, for those of you that are kind of familiar with this, um, forgive me for going back to the basics, but I just want to cover this. I see Jennifer on, so Jen, pay attention. <laughs> You'll appreciate this. Now, when you are reading your instructions on the PowerPoint that comes with each of your kits, you will notice, for example, I may say, cut your paper at five inches from the bottom. Well, number one, we never remove a barcode in one of my classes until it's time to remove a barcode. And the reason for that is because that'll usually indicate which end of the paper is the top, which end is the bottom. And you know, some patterns, it really doesn't matter, right? Something like stripes like this, it's not going to matter which end you, you go from. However, if you flip it over, your words are going in a particular direction. So sometimes it does matter the direction you're making those kits. And also because I really don't waste a lot of paper in each of my projects. You know, if you've done these projects, you know that there's very little left over. I use just about every little scrap I can. So it's very important that you're cutting your paper in the right direction and cutting the right sizes at the time you need so that You've got enough paper left over in other parts to get the other sizes or dimensions you need. So as an example, let's go over a little bit of Trimmer Anatomy 101, okay? Most of us have this, um, or a paper trimmer, any sort of paper trimmer, really. There's a few things that are consistent with all paper trimmers. Number one, 99% of them have some sort of slide-out ruler 
and this of course will go to at least 12 inches some go this one goes up to 17 inches gosh I love Westcott for that um, so you've got your markings or your your ruler markings all the way across so it'll give you all the different little increments as needed now the majority of your trimmers on the clear little fold over bar most of them also have the markings too there's very few that don't um, I know Fiskars has got a rotary trimmer that doesn't that makes it a little more difficult because sometimes you need to know where to start and stop that cut using your cutting blade which brings me to the next point of course the majority of trimmers well all trimmers will have some sort of um, blade carriage this particular Westcott one looks like this and on the side um, you'll notice I don't know if you can, can see that there's a little line it's the light here there's a little like engraved line right on the edge there that basically when that line is lined up with the markings on the clear ruler that's going to indicate where your cut is going to start and where it's going to stop okay so that's the big deal with that part there now when I say for example um, you are going to cut your paper at five inches from the bottom well we know the barcode is at the top okay so we're not gonna cut from five inches here we want to cut it five inches from the bottom so what that means that bottom edge we are going to place in our trimmer and let me turn the camera down we are going to place in our trimmer so that bottom edge right here is in line with the five inch marking on our trimmer and it's really a shame that I grabbed a trimmer where the numbers are all worn off um, six, so it's going to be right about in here okay so that five inch marking was at the five inch mark right here with the bottom edge of the paper now I cut it five inches wide and now I want to go seven inches from the left edge so when I'm looking at my paper is this the left? No, that's the top. What about this one? That would be the bottom. This is the right edge. When you're looking at the paper, that's the right edge. I want seven inches. I want seven inches from the left edge. So that means I'm going to put that left edge in my trimmer at seven inches. When I'm at seven inches, then I can cut. So now I'm left with a five by seven inch piece. Now, really looking at something like this, it really doesn't matter, I suppose, if we had done right or left. But if we had a patterned paper in which we needed a particular printed element on that paper, it would have been important to make sure that you follow the instructions like that. So, does that make a little more sense, ladies? So we cut it five inches from the bottom, seven from the left. Now the next piece, maybe the instructions say you want to cut at three inches from the right. Well, we're looking at the leftover piece that is now five by five. We want to cut it three inches from the right. So we're not going to put this edge at three. We're not going to put this edge at three because that's the bottom this is the left edge so that would be incorrect also so we want three inches from the right so when you're looking at your paper the right side is the one you are going to put at three inches so now when I've cut it I now have a three by five does that make a little more sense Jen I know you were one Hopefully that starts to make a little bit of sense. So that's one of the reasons you don't want to cut off the barcode because sometimes the barcode's at the bottom. And you know, when I'm creating my instructions, see these little cheat sheets? This is how when I'm creating a project, I sit and I sketch out exactly how I had to cut those papers. 
so that when I'm writing the instructions, I have that information with the dimensions, where that particular piece of paper, maybe for that photo mat, came from on the big sheet, so on and so forth. So I use this as my guide when I'm writing my instructions, because doing this one here, the countdown piece, it said cut it 7 by 12, so 7 inches from the right, and then scoring at a half inch and a 5 eighths from the top. So I've got my little dotted lines going across there. Do we see? Does that kind of make sense? That's not for this project, that was for another one. But that kind of gives you an idea to the method behind my madness, right? Yeah, I know, it's not necessarily the most beautiful way of doing things, but you know what, it works for me. And I think once that's explained and clarified for you, it'll probably help you immensely. And you kind of got a glimpse into uh, the mind of a crazy woman. Yes, that's just how I do it. It works for me. It works well in a classroom setting. So once people kind of grasp the whole concept of, um, you know, how I do my instructions, both verbally, like in person, as well as uh, in a written format, it makes a lot more sense. So, of course, if there's ever any questions, you guys all know. Um, okay, so hold on, Jen, you still need to understand the first cut. I don't know where you mean to cut the pointy part. So on the, on the blade, the blade here, you know, that's going to be your cut, right? Obviously. So the dimensions though, you know, if I say cut at seven inches from the left, that means you're lining up that left edge with whatever the number is on the ruler on your trimmer here so that you know it's going to be seven inches wide. Then you take that blade and you cut all the way. We are not going to stop that cut. I'm not one of those people that says, um, and you will almost never find in a project of mine that says, you know, cut only three inches in and then turn it. Now, I say commit to the cut. You don't know where you mean to cut. Okay, Jen, you and I may have to have a phone conversation or a Skype conversation later to kind of get a better idea. I'm not totally grasping what you're getting at. But you want to cut your paper once you've got the edge of the paper that you've been told at the certain mark on your trimmer, you need to take your blade and cut all the way through. Okay? So I'm going to leave that part for now. If you still need more help, drop me an email. I'll phone you. I'll do whatever i got to do. Uh, no, the folder step, one of the projects. Okay, we're going to the folder. We're getting there. I just wanted to show you on the trimmer, how to use the trimmer with the markings. We're going to be carrying on to the folder right away. Now, I should also mention... You know, while we've got the trimmer out, if you're scoring, those of you that don't know, the scoring blade is usually comes with your trimmer, whether you have to take it off and put it on separately, or the Westcott one, the scoring blade stays on and you just kind of push it off to the side, whatever side you're not using. Anyways, that scoring blade, um, you know, when you're asked to score something on your paper, say score it a half inch and five eighths of an inch, you know, same thing. You're going to score it rather than cut it. And scoring just simply puts a crease in your paper so that you can fold it as opposed to cutting all the way through. Okay? Um, yeah, okay, we're getting to the memory files, Jen. Slow down. Slow down. I promise. We'll get there. It's all good. Um, that was just cutting the paper. That was just showing you kind of trimmer anatomy 101. Now what we're going to do first, okay, well, seeing as you've got the memory file thing going on, let me grab a memory file. Um, here, let me grab one with the pointy end. Just give me a second. One 
and there's. Okay, so getting on to the memory files uh, that you need to cut, right? So uh, what did it say there? It says cut it six inch inches from the short end nearest the point. So basically, this short side here nearest the point, and that one was worded kind of a little bit tricky, needs to be cut at um, six inches this way. So our point, we're not cutting through it. We want this half to be at six inches. See, this file is not 12 inches wide, so I couldn't quite do it that way. Um, I couldn't say cut in half. And it was a little confusing. So this part here should make a little more sense. It's just simply six inches from the end nearest the point, like so. So we're just cutting it at six. And you'll notice um, the piece that's left over is going to be a little bit narrower, okay? Now this piece that's left over, now I don't have the instructions in front of me, we trimmed it down. Your next step, it's going to make it a little bit smaller. And I think it's basically just because I wanted to clean up those edges on that straight edge. So, Jen, you got the instructions there. Does it tell you what it has to be going the other way? This one we kept the point on. And I think um, maybe I should pull up the instructions here or measure it. But what you were going to do with this one, I know, is score it. Where did my album go? Let me just double check because this will make more sense here. So we were going to score it at uh, eight and a quarter and eight and a half by the looks of it. So this piece with the tab, um, where that fold is already, where it's been folded over, we are going to score it at eight and a quarter. So I'm going to put that fold at eight and a quarter and then eight and a half. So just move it over a quarter inch and that's just approximate. It's close enough. And the reason for that is because what I wanted to do, can you see? I can't quite see until I fold it there. I wanted to create a couple of score lines that would allow me to fold this up a bit figure it out however you want to fold it and it almost creates like a matchbook type thing right so I can play around with the folds at the top and it basically allows this little tab to come up as a um, just a little flap, almost like a matchbook. That's the best way to describe it here. Because when it's tied up closed, when it's tied up closed, it'll um, look a little bit neater than if we left a big old gap there. Now, while I have the memory file out, let me show you a couple of options for how you can add color to it. Because the really cool thing with these Heidi Swap memory files these particular ones that are white with a little bit of um, gray or black printing on it with the resist pattern is that there is that resist pattern. And the really neat thing about it is um, when we go to add a little bit of color, for example, I've got distress stain here. That's one option for adding color. Of course, you could use uh, like a color shine product or a glimmer mist, any sort of wet liquidy spray or stain like that works magnificently. And all you have to do is simply put the color on. In this particular case, I'm just using the distress stain. I'm just scribbling it over. And what you'll notice is that the red stain is attaching itself to the the non-treated paper part, okay? And the resist pattern that's printed on there is repelling the stain. So it's not going to actually stick to that part. I'm gonna go a little bit here. And then what you're gonna do is take a paper towel. If you take a paper towel and buff off 
the distress stain that did not adhere to the project because of the resist pattern that's been printed on there. Do we see how it didn't stick all the way through? So those shiny bits, that's the resist and it doesn't take color. So in this particular step though, you're actually going to color the entire folder because although it's um, the, the plastic, the clear pop is like an opaque, uh, opaque type finish, you can see through it ever so slightly. So I don't know. I just think it's better to do the whole darn thing and then buff off the extra. Now, you may notice that sometimes, depending on what you're using to color these color files, sometimes it doesn't buff right off just with a paper towel and you might have a bit of residual um, color that is tinting that resist pattern. So in this case, maybe it's a little bit pinky almost instead of being white where it's supposed to be white. All you need to do is take a clean piece of paper towel. Do you remember me telling you about these little Windex touch-ups? I mean, you can use regular Windex too, but the touch-ups are great because I just put a little drop on my paper towel and simply rub it over the surface. It's not going to remove the red, but it is going to remove the red that is remaining on the areas that are supposed to be white. Does that make sense? Then I got a little bit of Windex on my paper towel that I can just go in and clean up my workspace just like so. So now I've gone from a plain white memory folder to a really pretty red one in this particular case. And you know, um, for the instructions I said you could use, or I said I used fired brick distress stain and peeled paint distress stain. But of course, if you don't have these, you could substitute with another color that's kind of Christmassy that would work with, with the paper collections we're using. I just used these two because they were almost a perfect match to the Heidi Spot Believe collection. Um, but another thing you could do, now what did I just do with that other half? Hang on. There it is. If you didn't have the Distress Stain, um, but perhaps you had the Distress Ink Pad in those colors, that's another way that you can add color to the Color Magic papers. So by simply taking your foam blending tool, see Jen, this is a foam blending tool, okay? The foam blending tool allows you to lay that color down and you work by moving your hand in a circular motion and just keep dabbing every now and then. You'd be amazed how much color actually gets picked up on this foam. So it's not like you have to bang, 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 bang really hard. Just a little tap and lay that color down and you can just keep going until you cover the entire surface. Um, and again, at the end, with any leftover uh, ink that may be remaining on your resist area, you can just buff it off a wee bit. That paper towel that's been dampened with just one little hit of one little hit of um, distress ink, or sorry, one little hit of Windex will take that residual distress ink off, no problem. So as you can see, there's a couple of different ways that you can lay color down. In this particular case, yes, the stain is definitely more vibrant, packs more of a punch. With the foam blending tool, it's a little softer, but of course you can continue to build up the color. So if I wanted a darker red, I just keep going in and laying more color down to intensify what's there. So do you see by me going back over that time and time again, you know, I'm just going to get it to where I want it. So do we see the differences in shades from me going in and adding, you know, three or four levels of the Fired Brick Distress Ink Pad here, whereas that was the single pass. So it's, it's far softer, definitely more subtle. So that's the difference with the foam blending tool for adding the ink. Now, in your instructions, um, for the first piece, this was the piece with the little flap at the bottom. 
I did uh, recommend that you take your foam blending tool with some uh, fired brick and you know you can use peeled paint I think I had forest moss you know whatever colors you got reds and greens it's Christmas right whatever if you wanted to use brown that's fine but I just simply because we're gonna see a little bit of these edges and so I just put um, little bits of color down and I'm going in a circular motion like so and you'll notice I'm not doing the entire edge and the reason for that is is in a moment I'm gonna go in and lay some green down and blend the two together. You could use brown, you could use, like really it doesn't matter, but it was just because I didn't want the stark white. So I'm just blending in, and again, work in a circular motion, gradually build up your color. I always say it's easier to add more color, but it's really difficult to take it away. So if you have to go over an area a couple of times, so be it. But at least then you're getting it to where you want it. So do you see how by me just blending in, and I'm focusing more around the edges because the inner part is going to be covered up. Cool, cool. So there we go. Just laying some color down. Maybe I want to add a bit more red, like whatever no rhyme or reason as to how I did it but that's essentially in a nutshell what I'm worried about when it comes to adding uh, your red and green foam blending tool or red and green ink using the foam blending tool sorry and then you will go ahead follow the instructions or the prompts to put your cut papers inside um, what I want to do next my friends is just pass pass past past this particular area um, and just show you how to bind these two memory files here how to get the two to kind of stick together and you know you can be a little bit creative in how you do this I guess um, there's a couple of different ways the big thing was is you know these memory files are already pre-scored for you and I wanted to more or less create a little bit of a spine with my particular files so let me double check here um, you will notice if you look at the front of the memory file so the front of the memory file is the one that has the notch taken out of it okay if you look over towards the left, you will notice all the score lines. I folded on the second one in. And it's already folded on that last one. So by me folding on that second line in, it's going to give me about a half inch um, spine. Do we see that? Instead of it being flat, it now sits at about a half inch. And that's going to allow for some of the bulk and dimension that's going to be added to the insides with all the other memory files and, and photo mats, so on and so forth. The second one, let's see what I folded it at here. I mean, I really should have maybe opened the instructions, but I didn't. It looks like I folded it at the first one. So the smaller file, it looks as though I folded along that first score line. And did I do it on the last? No, it looks like the second last. So the first and the third for this one as well. So you just got to manipulate that plastic a wee bit. Now, once I've got my folds on the score lines where I want them to be, we are then going to take a little bit of red line tape. 
And I wanted to use the red line tape because I kind of want to cheat a little bit and secure that memory file where I want it within the larger one. So I want to secure the small one within the large one before I go ahead and hole punch it. I thought I had thinner stuff. I thought I had some thinner tape kicking around, but I'm not seeing it. So I'm going to have to use my wider red line. If you have a quarter inch, I think that would probably work. Um, but I'm not finding mine, so I'm just going to... Will this work? Oh, that might be too wide. Okay, Trisha, it's got to be around. Now you probably want to use your quarter inch if you can find it. Give me one more sec, my friends. Ah, uh -huh, there it is. It's hiding in another roll of adhesive. I knew I had it. So there we go. I have quarter inch red line tape. And I love this red line tape. This is the ThermoWeb stuff. And I love it because it's so strong. But it's clear. Although it's coming off the roll red, that is actually just the um, film on the one side of the adhesive, right? So what's going to happen here, cut that red line down. So of course getting that film off the red can sometimes be a little bit tricky to get it off. So I take the tips of my scissors or sometimes a paper piercer or something just to lift it initially and then that red line peels right off and that adhesive on the spine of this is now clear. So now comes the fun part where you get to insert the small memory file into the large memory file. And the, the key is here, and sometimes you might have to just open it right up again. Um, the key is here to make sure that you've got it lined up straight. So remember, both of the tabs are going to be towards the back, okay? And essentially what I'm doing is positioning this little memory file into the big memory file. And I'm eyeballing it at this point, but ultimately, you know, I want it to be about halfway. It's about centered. Like, that's close enough for me. I don't need to break out the ruler. And what I've done is made sure that um, when that memory file is positioned inside that it's flat. So basically wanted to make sure the score line was not, like the score line on the big one was not covered up by the little one because we need to be able to um, open it and close it quite easily. Now, here comes the fun part. You can go one of two ways to get your holes um, because we want to put a couple of holes into that spine so that we can take our long sheer ribbon and um, take our long sheer ribbon, put holes in it, or feed the ribbon through the holes. Sorry guys, I'm dealing with like this migraine that's had me going for 24 hours so my words are really not doing super great here. And after spending all day in court today, we had to go to court, by the way. Um, my husband's Jeep was stolen last New Year's, and uh, today was the trial. And I just got to say what a joke our Canadian justice system is. But anyways, that's a story for another day. All the kids walked. Steal a Jeep. Just say that, oh, I thought it was my friend's dad. And, uh, yeah, you know. $12,000 in damage and everything else and just walk away. So anyways, I'm not having the greatest day with a clear head. Um, I'm going to use my big bite for this. This is a crocodile. This is the giant one. Now, maybe you have the small crocodile. That's fine. The difference is between the two, the smaller crocodile, you're not going to be able to get, will you get it in? Hmm you may not be able to reach. So if you're using the small crocodile, what you're probably going to have to do is punch your holes on the uh, small file first. Center, right on the center of the spine. 
and I would punch a bigger hole personally. And the reason you're going to do this, like so, watch, I'm going to show you a trick. So I'm pushing my file all the way in to the hole punch part on the crap it off. And I'm just punching a hole, and you're pretty much punching through that adhesive now at this point, right? Okay, so now I have two holes through the um, spine on the folder. Let me just move some of these here, make a little more room. And that's because I'm using this small crocodile, which the majority of population has, so I'm just going to go with that one for now. I'll reinsert this back into the small one. Or reinsert the small one, sorry, into the large. Pretty much centered somewhere there. Get it so that it's straight because you don't want it being crooked. Not for this part. Otherwise it'll sit crooked in there and it'll drive you crazy. Where's my tape? Oh, that's why it didn't work. There. Then, ugh, my tape's not sticky because I undid it. Anyways, then what you're going to do is um, mark your holes. Okay, once you've got it centered and positioned, go ahead and mark your holes, whether you use a paper piercer or whatever, because you're going to have to punch a second. Where did those holes go? Ah, I should have put more tape on it. This is why you want to use the tape so it's not floating around like this, right? Now, I marked where my holes are, so now I'm going to take my crocodile, and remember you can look through the top, you can look through there, through that hole, and you'll know exactly where that hole's going. And if I do just a little semicircle where I just poked through, semicircle times two is going to give me a full circle. And that full circle, when lined up, should be enough where I'll be able to get my ribbon through. So see, I just did two semicircles there. And I'm going to line up those holes. And then grab some ribbon. You guys had um, sheer ribbon, right? I love that sheer ribbon. I can't get enough of that. That's just one of those classics. So you've got some uh, polka dotted ribbon here. And you're just simply going to poke it through the holes. If you can be coordinated enough. Apparently I'm not today. Poke it through this one. And through this one, there we go. And you might want to make sure on the inside that that ribbon is um, sitting, you know, kind of flat, kind of nice. Play around and manipulate it. You don't necessarily want it all twisty, or maybe you do. Maybe you want to tighten it up on the inside. I don't know. But then you can just simply tie it on the outside. And I just tied a big old bow. Tie a pretty bow on the spine, play around, get it to how you like it, and then of course you can trim off the ends as you wish. So the nice thing about this is now, by inserting that mini memory file into the big one, that gives us a really nice foundation to start with for our album. Okay. Now, let's go on. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and move some of this out of the way. 
So tonight we've covered uh, the staining or the inking, how to do that. We've built the actual file. I've shown you how to um, use your trimmer and such to do some of the pre-cutting. Now let me grab the actual memory file just so I can walk you through because I'm not going to go ahead and do all the dimensions and cut all the paper so on and so forth. So let me show you some of the other really cool things we can do. Um, I'm just going to see if I have my die cuts here because we have those die cut holly leaves. Here we go. See the die cut holly leaves that were in your kit? Um, you know, they start out as just plain green. So what I did here is I simply wanted to add a little bit of definition to these leaves because, you know, lumps and bumps, good thing. And plus, holly leaves aren't just plain. They have a little bit of visual interest to them. So I just basically kind of followed almost the center and, you know, put a, put a little crease in there. And then you can use either brown or green ink. Here I'm using forest moss. And I think I tried to give you a couple shades of green so that um, your holly leaves had a little bit of fun contrast in it instead of being all the same. So I'm just adding a little bit of Distress Ink just to the edges and along that fold. And again, it just looks a little better than if you had just had a plain green die cut. So those are for the holly leaves on the front. Now, um, in your kits, you also had the package of the banners, right? Some of them were scallops, some are triangles, some were those little notched out ones. Um, and again, those were colored using the same technique using the distress stain. You could also use ink or some other sort of uh, colorant tin and that would be just fine. I want to point out, I also said in the instructions to not necessarily throw away your barcodes because on your barcodes, just some of the names of the papers I thought were brilliant um, and worked really well with this project. So, for example, one of the papers is called Countdown. So my album is called Holiday Countdown. So I used Holiday and I attached those with clear mini dots, okay, little mini glue dots, or you want to make sure that the type of adhesive you're drying or using is going to dry clear because these are see-through letters. This holiday up here, they're all transparent, so you don't want to use something that's got really blobby adhesive underneath. When I put down the mini glue dots, you can't even see where they are. So always be mindful of the type of adhesive you're going to use. And here this countdown can you see that? That was actually off the name of the paper. So I just kind of trimmed it out and, and it worked well. Uh, the Tis the Season to be Jolly, that is from one of the papers that had, you know, the little three by four journal cards on it throughout. And I just trimmed it down, no exact dimensions, just, you know, trimmed it up neatly, added a bit of ink around the edges and bada bing, bada boom. What else do we have in here that you, you need to see? So your memory files, and remember, your memory file may be the scallopy type pattern, or you may have the memory file here that is more this pattern. At the end of the day, nobody's going to know or care, okay? So you got one or the other in your kit. Um, inside, again, if you follow all the instructions, let me tilt this up a wee bit. If you follow all the instructions, the dimensions and such are there to create your little flaps little things that open and close throughout. You know, there's just a lot of really fun little, um, fun little finishing touches here. So the one thing I always like to tell people too is, you know, things like these banners, you may not want to actually glue that down until after you get your photo in place because if you glue that down now, using adhesive all the way across, you're not going to be able to get your photo in. So if you do want to put this, into place, maybe only tack it into position with a couple of glue dots. Then once you get your photo in, you can go back and really anchor it down, okay? Because you don't want to have to rip it all apart in the meantime. So that's uh, that particular side. The center part 
is um, you've got the frame and inside we've got some really beautiful little pages and you know they're they're quite simple we just kept the main embellishments are pretty much just the banners and and some of the words um, worked well with the the theme of the album and of course you can always change them up too okay you can always change them up and of course you have all of this information in your instructions to create this particular project and um, you know it's a lot of fun and if I'm not mistaken you know I should count up the number of spaces for photos but I'm pretty certain that I'm just turning this up here guys and um, I'm pretty certain that I put enough spaces for photos in there for at least 25. And the idea for this album was to have a holiday countdown. So, so many people do a December daily journal, meaning they take a photo every day of the month or maybe record, um, you know, special moments from each day of the month of December leading up until Christmas. There's a lot of really cool things going around on the internet. In fact, I can give you a little sneak or a little hint. I know Canadian Scrapbooker Magazine, if you're on Instagram, hmm, we're going to have a little prompt every day throughout the month of December. So those sorts of things are fabulous for a project like this because you can then, you know, take those prompts and maybe today is, you know, um, the theme is winter fun or whatever it is, you know, what does winter fun mean to you and your family today? Are you outside building a snowman? Well, maybe you're building or taking a photo of building a snowman and that's going to go on day three of your album. So however you want to use this album, I did try to leave it pretty wide open in that respect. Um, but of course, if you wanted to use it as a December daily, I think it'll work out quite well. Let's double check the number of spots we have for photos. So we have one. Now I'm curious two, three, four, five, six. You could even put a small one here or use it for journaling, but let's call that six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. This is actually a pocket, so you could put in another for fourteen. We counted that one already. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. How perfect is that? So there's room for at least 25 photos in this album, making it the perfect project for your December daily or maybe just you know just to collect all the photos from Christmas Day who knows whatever you want it's awesome it's a ton of fun you'll learn a lot of goodies um, or learn a lot of tricks as you play with the goodies that are included in the kit speaking of kits that one sold out in record time so um, for those of you that don't know I'll just give you the quick rundown the artsy adventure class kit club Every month you get a different project, much like what I've just shown there, and all the contents are in the kit that you need to create said project every month. Every month it's going to differ. We're going to use different manufacturers. Some months we'll do a layout, some months we'll do a mini album, some months we'll do a memory file. We've done canvases. You know, it just changes all the time. And the idea is for not only you to learn new techniques and play with new products, but also for me, as a teacher, often I get into the rut of doing the same thing over and over and over again. And while I love it, it's not very often I get to be creative. And, you know, I'm the luckiest girl in the world because I get to travel all over the world sharing really fun classes with ladies like yourself. And I often get ladies from all parts of the globe saying, I wish I could do that class. So that's how the Artsy Adventure Class Kit Club was formed. Actually, um, we're going into it being a year almost here. I think we've just about wrapped up an entire year. In fact, December is the last one for this year and January will be the start of year two for the Kit Club, which is pretty amazing. So we've had some really awesome projects this year. Um, 
one or two were a little simpler for me as far as I'm concerned, but a lot of people still really loved it. And sometimes simple for me is, is enough for others. So it's cool. It's great for all of us to push our boundaries a little bit and learn new things along the way. Um, so if you're interested in participating, just drop me an email at trisha.lado at gmail.com. So T-R-I-S-H-A dot L-A-D-O at gmail.com. And I'm more than happy to walk you through. You can also check out artsyadventure.blogspot.com. And that will, um, in one of the posts, you know, throughout, I always give a rundown how the kit club works. Now, there's two extra kits that I still have kicking around right now. Last week I started to show, um, you know, I really, really, really loved the Heidi Swap memory file album that we did for November. And I had a few sheets of the paper left over and I loved it. I think that Believe collection is my favorite collection this year, uh, as far as Christmas ones are concerned. So I went ahead and created a second project. This is also using the Believe, but it's a 12 by 12 album. We are creating the entire album from scratch. So using a canvas and chipboard pages, we created our own spine with embossed foil. I don't know if you can, if the camera's picking that up very well. Um, embellishing the front beautiful dusty attic chipboard with some really cool Christmas elements. And then there's, you know, going to be a bunch of pages and memory files and such on the inside. So I only have, um, I believe, three kits of this one left. I counted up how many I was able to do and got a few more than I thought I'd be able to. So I have three or four kits of that one. And the last one is a few kits left of the um, Memory File album. This is using the Rana Far Up and Away collection that was put out by My Mind's Eye. And it's another Memory File album that's really kind of fun with several pages in there, lots of interactive components. Um, and I also have a few of these. So I thought that for a little Christmas tidbit, if you're interested, um, I'm going to extend it until, what are we today, the 26th. So I'll go till December 1st. If you want both of these kits together, I will give a 10% discount. These are not part of the class kit club. These were projects that I did over and above. They're extra ones. So um, if you're interested in both of them, they're 10% discount for the both. Otherwise, it's 60 and 75 and everything, of course, always comes with a PowerPoint with really detailed instructions and tons of photos. And the uh, December or the Christmas one, we will set a date to do a Ustream episode um, to walk you through at least assembling the album on that one because I think that will be a little bit easier of course demonstrated so I never usually do full classes because we'd be here for four hours um, but I always try to take you through the more difficult stuff or stuff that's easier demonstrated so I'm gonna wrap it up at that it's uh, yeah been just about an hour I want to thank all of you girls for tuning in um, of course, anytime you have any questions, drop me an email. I'm more than happy to walk you through. And as mentioned, this is recorded, so if you want to come back to it, you know, just save the link. I'll have it posted on the Artsy Adventure Facebook page, um, and you can just come back and watch it at any time. Or you can go to ustream.tv and search Artsy Adventure. That will bring up the Artsy Adventure page, and you will be able to watch the entire episode again. And in fact, I'm even going to try to start uploading it to YouTube, which um, I finally figured out how to do that. So I'll get information on that out to you right away, too. So again, thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great night. We're getting into the month of December, so it's going to be a little bit crazy for everyone. So for everyone that celebrates Christmas, um, Merry Christmas. Have lots of fun. Enjoy the holidays. And those that don't, you know, enjoy the, uh, enjoy the winter break. How's that? Gotta keep it politically correct. Um, it's all good though. Have a great night, my friends. We'll chat soon, okay? Bye bye.